to that, let's talk a little bit about Haruhi Suzumiya. Mm. So we're moving now into an episode called Mysteric Sign. It's a rather unusual name for an episode. And uh, in this episode, we are returning from the melancholy of previous episodes, which, of course, this being the broadcast order, means that we don't know what that melancholy is yet. <laughs> we haven't gotten there yet, but that's okay. So uh, in this episode, we're, we're seeing a lot of stuff surrounding, um, actually, a very brief start there, um, the prologue. And then we start jumping into the, into the episode itself, where Haruhi notices something weird. And that is that their website sucks. Perhaps not weird. So this is kind of an interesting bridge episode because we have the characters dealing with some, um, uh, dealing with a problem, but one that's not part of the overall larger plot, right? So the characters are there. They're, um, uh, there's this, this thing with the website, and the, the main problem of the episode is what are we going to do with the website? How do we make the website it, 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 It's funny. Uh, we we kind of get a, a, a hint of melancholy coming up <laughs> because uh, it's, it's sort of a blues mm -hmm. feel to it. Uh, of course, the baton of blue has been passed from uh, the, the blue baton of depression. Haro, he did, I think he called John, it. yeah, the blue baton. So he's 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 making that uh, uh, relay metaphor of mm. being handed the stick. Yeah. Okay, I get to have that melancholy. It's, it's a lovely little image. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they're kind of doing whatever the website, and Haro he decides to update the website with the the drunken tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs> the drunken tapeworm. As he calls logo. it. Don't you see? The SOS Brigade. It's right there. I also want to point out something here in terms of the visuals. Uh, and if you're listening to this on audio, um, go to that moment. It's about, uh, let's see here. Where is that? Uh, it's about two and a half minutes into the episode. You see Haruhi and Kion from inside the monitor that they're... In the, the reflection yeah. of them are uh, from the <laughs> if you were inside the monitor looking out, yeah, you see them. <laughs> you have this wonderful, like, green tinge on everything, and you see the SOS Brigade. More, even more than that, you actually see the scan lines moving up the uh, the monitor, which is pretty impressive, yeah, because that's 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 something added for effect there. Because, yeah, it's an anime, <laughs> <laughs> those don't really exist, but it shows you, hey, you know, this is this is kind of the, the refresh rate that you'd see mm -hmm. if you were looking through <laughs> the different scan versions. Of... Yeah. Um, and as usual, great job on Haruhi's expressions here, her kind of frustration and general uh, annoyance. She's pretty annoyed for much of the episode um, at the, the characters around her. And so um, there's a in very interesting moment here, though, which is, I think, a bit of a hint about the show um, in general, where... And in fact, it happens right here near the end of this, where uh, Kion says within himself, in his internal dialogue, or monologue, if you will, um, you know, this is annoying for me because I don't have much free time myself. Mm. And then Haruhi says, well, you're the one with all the, the free time, and leans forward. <laughs> and it's like this psychic link going on, which is very interesting. She's reading his brain. Maybe, <laughs> just maybe. Of course, she's complaining because the uh, website isn't getting as many hits as it should. It's it's gotten less than three digits worth of hits, <laughs> and ninety percent of those are her checking to see how many hits there are. And why does she think it should be having more hits? Well, you know, if it it it's you know the why shouldn't it have more? Well, hits? if Everybody, Kion had just put up those those sexy pics of Mikuru, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been. Filled with <laughs> Miss Asahina. Miss Asahina. <laughs> and, and again, and you pointed this out while we were talking about it, how Kion is very important in this series as a, a restraining hand on Haruhi. <laughs> so uh, you see a great example there where he's like, no, I'm not uploading those. No, that's not going to happen. Very, very bad idea. <laughs> he's, he's the the voice of reason and common sense <laughs> the, to, to otherwise balance her, her whimsical... Uh, 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 pursuits <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, this this wonderful kind of sad moment where Kion then comes into the room again 
he just can't seem to get away. You know, he doesn't like it, but he just he still shows up. And Haruhi is there, and he says, "You're the only one here." And Yuki's in, in there, and he goes, "Oh, well, she's more a piece of furniture than anything." Yeah, she's else. an accessory to the room. <laughs> she's you know, she the was room. there. <laughs> she's sad, but true. True. Very true. <laughs> well, um, now something has happened mm -hmm. to the website. It has. It's gotten fuzzier. So, uh, so Kion put, took it upon himself to put out some flyers for the SOS Brigade. And so... Um, well, now that uh, that uh, Drunken Tapeworm logo <laughs> now has funky characters to match it. Yeah. In the title and all the words. Yeah, and it, it's like something has corrupted the files and uh, something's not showing up correctly. And again, I want to give them credit for the fact that you actually see like weird Latin characters on the website, as you would expect to see in uh, a page that's been corrupted. Um, of course, what is Haruhi's immediate um, thought as to why that happened? Oh, her immediate thought is, cyber terrorists attack <laughs> on the SOS Brigade! <laughs> With less than 100 hits, they are the primary target of sure. cyber terrorism. Yeah, they, those terrorists could not just wait to get there. He said it, yeah. Cyber yeah. terrorists. You want to update the web the web page on our website, which only has one web page. You know, <laughs> one page. <laughs> so yeah, so there's um, uh, that going on, and Kion suddenly realizes he can't fix it. Like there's a, a little moment where you see him double clicking and saying yes to upload all the files to the server, um, and I doesn't really solve it. Doesn't, doesn't really solve it, it which oh. is weird because if he's uploading the correct images, why is it still Corrupted. Corrupted. So yeah. something, something's weirds going on. There's a strange. Ever yeah. since you changed that logo. Whereupon the camera starts zooming in on Yuki, because she is the data thought entity android person. <laughs> so maybe something's going on there. And again, we'll note no glasses. But, um, to everyone's surprise, well, Itsuki walks in. That's not a surprise. Um. But somebody else comes in. My goodness, it's a new character. Um, Mikuru and a classmate. This sort of ocean colored, uh, this uh, uh, light green colored uh, girl who has a job for the SOS Brigade. A job? Yeah. What, she read the flyer? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> someone read the flyer. <laughs> and so she's here to. Um, helping, and it's interesting actually the kind of the framing of this. How everyone <laughs> she's here... balancing a pen on her lips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Haruhi is not I'm taking this. Taking you seriously. <laughs> <laughs> not so much. Oh, Haruhi, so bored so easily. Oh my. Um, we notice that everyone else is kind of standing around. We have a client. Yes, a it, mystery. It, it's very exciting. Now, of course, the other side of the coin is the, I think they only have three chairs. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 it's a standing. <laughs> <laughs> Standing your moment. <laughs> but we have this actually really lovely color scheme in this shot where it's late in the day. Mm. Haruhi has been you know, banging on Kion. Uh, not literally. <laughs> and um, so you have this, this lovely late in the day evening colors and everything, this sort of washed out yellow. And the main and this this girl is not really wanting to explain things. Hmm. She's interestingly quiet. She is very interestingly quiet for for a girl who's for a girl who's worried about her boyfriend yeah. having disappeared. Mm -hmm. Of course, our first thoughts go: Why are you coming to these guys <laughs> and not the police? <laughs> Which Kion asks later: Why? Why us? Why not a teacher or something? Um, but Haruhi, being Haruhi, immediately um, accepts the job, and with this wonderful flashback to what was going on with uh, uh, the old boyfriend <laughs> of how Haruhi leans back. And uh, we get this sort of weekly world news National Enquirer um, image <laughs> shot of the sexual harassment. Well, and, we find uh, out not only is this girl's boyfriend missing, but he's also familiar and has talked about the SOS Brigade. Yeah. In fact, if they had a rival, it would probably be him. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be this guy because the missing boyfriend turns out to be the head of... The computer, computer club. club. <laughs> the same guy who Haruhi 
borrowed, shall we say? No, she <laughs> she commandeered the mm -hmm. greatest computer that they had just purchased. Yep, pretty much. That's the one standing behind him right now. With tears in his eyes to install it and uh, pretty much uh, mm -hmm. uh, hijack him. <laughs> yes. Which raises the question, well, if their website's acting funky, maybe. Mm. Maybe there is a cause. Yeah. Maybe something's going on there. Um, and Might I, there I be a link? Love that that um, that drawing of Haruhi right there. That's a great <laughs> image that of is... Haruhi. Just... <laughs> The enthusiasm. Full of enthusiasm, <laughs> literally reaching across the table. We'll take the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Haruhi being Haruhi, of course, takes the case, which is the easy part. So we get some some nice moments where finally Kion is starting to think through this. And we have this interesting moment here where Haruhi decides, okay, we're going to kind of move forward. And um, you see some interesting images here as as they're talking with this through because suddenly um, what happens when, when Haruhi decides they're going to kind of move forward on this, what happens is Mikuru stops and she suddenly looks very concerned. Hmm. And then we cut to Yuki who does something very unusual. She closes the book. Ooh. Oh, it's got her attention. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting serious. So, and, and again, here's something kind of interesting. Um, they show up at his house, and one of the things you don't necessarily notice immediately, but uh, Haruhi tries the door, it's locked, then she, of course, then she tries, then she the, tries the bell. The yeah, bell. Hey, I'm just going to walk in <laughs> on you, whatever you're doing. Surprise, here I am. Right. You've been missing. <laughs> but Haruhi finally makes the right choice, which is go find the super and, and talk to him and say, hey, we're classmates, we wonder where he's been. And then... Good approach. Yeah, yeah. pretty good approach. Uh, whereupon... Yuki tries the door and it opens for her. She has that magic touch there. She sure does. <laughs> um, and they play it off like, why didn't you check the, the, the door before? But she had. And it didn't open for her. Um, and I love the, again, the, the animation on, on this and just the, the focus on the art. Look at Yuki's expression here. That's not a completely neutral expression anymore. Sort of a... Hmm. Yeah, it, it's a little more like... Hello. And in fact, you, you can even notice that um, her stage right eyebrow is slightly up. Oh, yeah. She's, you know, it's, it's kind of this, you coming? Yeah. Kind yeah, of expression yeah. there. And uh, so they go into the room, and she, she opens the door for everyone. <gasps> and in they come. And <laughs> love this shot that Haruhi's literally bouncing on his bed oh. as they find it empty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boing, 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 jumping on the guy's bed. <laughs> come on. <laughs> um... But Haruhi's full of enthusiasm. Yeah. She's excited. And this is part of the point, is that, you know, it's, hey, this is an adventure. It's something they're having fun with. And whereupon, Yuki goes up to Kion, <laughs> Itsuki goes up to Kion and says, we have to get out of here now. Why would that be? <laughs> and Yuki tries to explain. There's a funky smell. <laughs> <laughs> but he does notice a smell. Right. And it's, Meanwhile, and it's not the fridge. <laughs> opened the fridge <laughs> and is going through the guy's food. <laughs> hey, look, I found these. They're only three days uh, overdue. <laughs> but why don't you eat them? <laughs> she does not have the appropriate attitude <laughs> or attention span. Of course, she feeds them <laughs> to someone else. Right. Miss Asahina here. <laughs> Although she does eat one. She, I, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll give yeah, her that. Yeah. So she, um, she does have a stomach for it. Yeah. And so Haruhi says, okay, we're done here. Let's leave. Let's just get out of here. And walks off with that wonderful, happy expression. <laughs> and everyone walks off. Kion brings them all back and says, okay, we've got to take care of this. And we get this wonderfully strange scenario where Yuki suddenly starts speaking extremely fast. We've seen her do this before. And they're in the desert. Poof. Yeah. Whoa. Different <laughs> world, different time, space, in the same location. Wow. <laughs> Bigger on the inside. <laughs> and uh, Mikuru immediately clutches onto Kion's arm. We get that lovely line yeah. where he says, I wish I could enjoy her, Mikuru, on my arm, but I'm kind of freaking out right now. <laughs> so, and there they are in the desert. And there they are in the desert. Now, we kind of expected something strange to happen here, right? I expected something strange. That's pretty strange That's as pretty it strange. is there. <laughs> A space within this guy's apartment is now very expansive. Mm -hmm. But not only that, he's supposedly in this other dimension somewhere. Yeah. 
and she points, and we find out where and what he is, which is... Oh, my. <laughs> a camel cricket? A giant camel cricket. These things are creepy enough when they're small, but no this thing kidding. is huge. Now, this is playing off a few things. <laughs> this is <laughs> the size of that. Massive. Um, there's a lot of insect collecting that goes on in Japan. Hmm. Uh, it's a big thing that a lot of kids do. So it would not be unusual for a teenage boy to think back on that in his childhood. Camel crickets. Um, and maybe have one of, one of them laying around or pictures along those lines. So it's not that weird to have that association. But it is weird to have that as the only association. Those are the creepiest creatures. They, they, I mean, they, they really hop are. this way, they <laughs> hop that way. You can't catch them, and they're like. <laughs> and, and we also have a little um, uh, reference back here to the anime film Nausicaa: The Valley of Wind. Oh, uh, Miyazaki's first original film, hmm. where uh, humanity is threatened by insects, uh, giant insects, Ooh. and we know they're angry when their eyes are red. Red insect eyes, not good. Not good. And what color are the insect's eyes here? Red. Very, very red. But fortunately, Koizumi Itsuki here has... He his, has power. He has power. He's not just a part-time esper. Yeah. He's a full-time guy. <laughs> he's, he's got a ball of... But his ball of energy is not 100%. It's only 10%. 10%. Yeah. But it's still pretty impressive. Yeah. See if here. I could do that, I'd really... Yeah. Enjoy. Wouldn't complain. Yeah. Ball of fire. A little bit of Dragon Ball Z action going on here. And again, you see some interesting stuff happening here, sort of visually, where uh, Kozumi says, I'm, my, my powers are only at 10%. And then what does he do? He looks at Yuki. Mm -hmm. and but it, perhaps it, that's all that is needed. Right. Maybe that's all the power he needs. And who's who determining this? That's <laughs> odd. Who knows? <laughs> Yuki's not going to say. <laughs> She's um, so quiet. But we get this fabulously animated action sequence where suddenly Kozumi leaps into action. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Mikuru just can't stop She's almost shaking. Gonna yank his hands <laughs> off at that. But Kozumi leaps into Time action. To play volleyball with... Yeah, a little bit of volleyball action here Wham. going. Wham! Boom! Hits that thing and we get this great little action sequence where it's bouncing back and forth. It goes for Yuki, who immediately pulls up a force field, which wow. is darned awesome, and uh, pushes Ooh. it back. The team with such power. Yeah. Wait, well, what's that? And a then... <laughs> a scarab has tended its wounds. <laughs> this, this scarab comes across the sky and does... This, this is Magical a reference... Magical scarab. <laughs> it's a reference to a Japanese video game where this comes across... It might be one of the Final Fantasies, where um, this can kind of happen randomly to enemies. And it just makes them more powerful. Where or, can I get or some of these scarabs? Yeah, right. Exactly. The day when I'm Sca running low on energy. Dang it! Scarab gum. Blasted <laughs> scarab! How how dare it do that? Well, now red eyes back. <laughs> Camel cricket, coming at them again. Yeah, and Takozumi launches again, Another. hits it, and this one is enough. Now again, we're 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 getting some hints here about various characters in the sense that sure enough, um, both Kion and Mikuru have no defense against this thing. They're just uh, they're just sitting there, um, so the scarab digitally disappeared. Yeah, and pixelated. It is, and now it's like little balls of yeah, smoke. Yeah, little pixels. balls of smoke. Digital which is, dust. Again, a bit of a reference to, to Nausicaa, where you have this this floating homage, uh, floating dust, a little homage. And here's the computer club president, oh, and he's we're lying in the floor of his malady, his, his one room with I'm sure no idea what's going on. Uh, so Yuki powers up the computer, uh, his computer, and realizes what's going on, which is that in true perfect sci-fi ridiculousness you know we've got, we got to have some big sci-fi explanation for what's going on so something like 380 million years ago this creature crashed on earth but there was it's a data creature so there's no data for it to a digital feed creature off of. it's it's a hungry digital creature yeah but so it, it, it hides somewhere where it, it hid somewhere on earth presumably in japan and it took until now for there to be data for it to actually live off of and then an event occurred, <laughs> which was the uploading that, that of... fed it that data <laughs> that initialized this whole thing. Which How was... did it get all this data from to the, feed it from the logo on their website? The logo on their website, <laughs> the, the 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 drunken tapeworm <laughs> logo. How, it somehow how be enough data. It's just a little. Somehow shot. that contains four hundred and eighty petabytes of information. 
that's huge. <laughs> so there's kilobytes, there's megabytes, there's gigabytes, there's, there's terabytes, terabytes, and there's, and there's petabytes. petabytes. And that's magnitudes, <laughs> magnitudes of terabytes. So yes, uh, something weird is going on here with that image. Haruhi seems to have done something. How did he upload that to the server? <laughs> <laughs> well, he he must says, have a fast connection. It's like 300K. Uh, How could uh, this be? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> and so I, I love this moment because this is, again, where Haruhi Susan Mia as a series kind of sets itself apart where Kion's now seen a lot of weird stuff. That is weird. And But this is the point at which he says, okay, now I'm getting scared. Yeah, because these freaky things are not just, <laughs> they're, they're real freaky things. Yeah, yeah. And oh. he, he's starting to grapple with things that are not simply strange, not simply like supernatural, but things that are way bigger than just you or I. Itself. Yeah, yeah and more importantly, that are unpredictable. Hmm. The fact that Haruhi can do this with a simple JPEG and suddenly change the course of what's happening with this alien creature, that's bi a big deal. Kind of scary. When Nagato uh, Yuki yeah. explains this, <laughs> I, I, I'm at a blur and she starts to go <laughs> blah, 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 <laughs> or something. <laughs> There's a great <laughs> line where he goes, uh, where Kyung goes, boy, it's like he took a dictionary and just pulling out words at random. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Um, So we do finally figure out kind of what's going on, but we do we now have a bunch more hits because the creature is creating more hits because mm. it feeds off data. So that's kind of what it does. Uh oh, yeah, thirty thousand like, hits almost. Yeah, and each one of those is a potential <laughs> for the creature to have gone off into somebody's <laughs> world and manifested yeah, itself. Exactly. But, but only eight suckers <laughs> are really affected. <laughs> so they've got uh, they got their work cut out for them. <laughs> But we end with this lovely moment, and it's actually kind of a, a hint forward to some later storylines, where Yuki is sitting there um, reading, and we have a, a moment where she's just sitting there reading, flipping things, and, and Kion is realizing how central Yuki is to all of this, how she is really the one who is resolving the problems she seems to be puppet she really a lot does of things that are going on it's very true and he also possesses maybe you know she's trying to keep how are we from being bored maybe this is how she's doing it by it it, it seems that way because uh, who was this this girl that came in this emery uh yeah. Kamidori, she the boyfriend doesn't know her exactly what? why would this uh, guy deny he has a a hot girlfriend like that. Yeah. No, there's no reason to. But she's she's who? Mm -hmm. She's. It, it seems to be something a little little strange. We, so we have this wonderful symbolism where mm. the wind blows in and blows the the pages of the book, which is a, again it, randomness, um, which is sort of changing Yuki's book. And what does she do? She puts her hand down on the book and stops it, and then puts the book back up so she can read it. And we have this lovely um, you know, and lovingly animated sequence of the wind blowing Yuki's uh, hair as she's reading the book. And you wonder just what exactly is her role in all this. Very, very mysterious. Mysterious. Yeah. So that's Mystery Sign. Next episode, we'll be back with the second part of that little uh, murder mystery detective story from last time. Oh, oh, I can't wait. Right. I, I've been wondering what's happened. Yeah. So it did jump to a different position. <laughs> okay, so we just left the guy on the island. Right. Yeah, that's the end of it. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. We'll grab the next boat to the... <laughs> <laughs> Haro, he got bored, so they just left. <laughs> but unfortunately, she, they can't leave. How, how is she? Oh, boy, yeah, that's an interesting that's, question. That, that's a tricky one. So now we're moving over into, speaking of strange and mysterious and confusing, we have Boogie Pop Phantom. Boogie Pop. Yeah. So we are starting a new series, mm -hmm. Boogie Pop Phantom. Yes. So this is a series from, I believe, and I'm going to check this out here real quick, uh, I believe 1999, technically. Uh, at least that was when the anime was released, but it goes back a ways. And this is worth ex uh, explaining. 
Um, the original Boogie Pop novel, uh, which I believe was called, um, let me make sure I've got this correct. Um, Something in others. Boogie Pop and Others. Boogie Pop and Others. Which is a neat little little name. Um, was a very successful novel. Um, think of it kind of like Harry Potter over in Japan. Hmm. Hugely successful um, uh, thing there. Novel first. So novel not, first. not a manga. Not a manga. Uh, but a series of what are called light novels, which means they're short, maybe 200, 250 word, or 250 page novels um, that are kind of more pop culture-y. Hmm. So they'll often have some supernatural or sci-fi elements or fantasy elements. And you'll see these, you know, not uh, uncommonly in anime. So, um, yeah, this came out in 2000, excuse me. So, close. Yeah. And um, so, it's complicated because... The idea behind the series, and Kohei Kodono is the author, and he unusually came in to kind of oversee the composition of this series. Hmm. And the idea was that basically the original author was going to come in and say, okay, how are we going to tell this story? So Boogie Pop Phantom is an adaptation of mo several different Boogie Pop novels. So, storyline. So, so when this was released in Japan, they were expecting that people were familiar with this story? Yes, absolutely. So it, this is almost like a, a fan video for the Boogie Pop franchise. This is good to know because as a viewer, yeah. it seemed quite disorienting well, not uh, having yeah. read the novels. It, it's a little like the Tim Burton Batman movie. Hmm. You know, if you don't know Batman, you could technically watch that movie. But there's some expectations that you're... You're going to understand who Alfred is and who, what's going on and who Bruce who Wayne is. Who is this? Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, in Boogie Pop, even more so. So, and, and this gets to something that's very different about uh, the Japanese way of doing these things versus the American way of doing things, where there's much more of an understanding of what's called the media mix. Hmm. This idea that you're going to have um, multiple different works in one franchise all supporting each other. Right, mm -hmm. and so if you want to know more, you're gonna go back and read the manga, or you're gonna go and play the video game, or what have you. Wow. Um, well, that, well, now with this one, there wasn't a video game, was there? Uh, not that I know of. Although there probably was some somewhere. At some point, somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but Boogie Pop uh, as a um, as a franchise. So th th this was kind of made for fans, but also um, the idea was, how can we adapt this to anime in an inter interesting way? Kodono did not want to simply you know, adapt it straight to anime. He wanted to make an, a, an anime out of this story. Hmm. So one of the ways he does this is by jumping right into storylines and not explaining all the backstory. Again, the idea is you're going to go back and, and read the novels, but also that you, know, you just have to do this. Um, hey, look what it is. Um, so yeah, so th th there's a lot of just kind of getting right to the individual episode story and less of background explanation of what the heck's going on. And so a little later, we'll, we'll talk about that. And uh, after this episode, we'll do a little bit of kind of spoilery background stuff. But for now, let's go to Shinyo Academy. Shinyo Academy. Yeah. The lights. The lights. So... This episode begins with a very important moment, which is called, and I think we can, we can explain this much, called the Column of Light event, which Ooh. for some reason decided not to show <laughs> what's going on here. Hmm. Uh, why am I not getting video? One second, guys. I'm having some weird video. Oh, it's coming in. The there Column we go. of Light. Yes, it, you know, it is. Th that's, I see that Column of Light, Yeah. and it, someone has described this series as being dark. And mm. not just content-wise, but in the visuals, yes. it, it seems that uh, we're starting out with a very dark scene. Let's talk about that. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a very important thing for us to, to tackle in this first episode is that the overall color scheme of, of Boogie Pop is one of the darkest out there. Mm. Um, and not only dark, it's very sepia-toned. Yeah, it's... It's very washed out, and uh, you don't see edges and corners very well. In fact, there are quite a few shots here where it's literally just a, a circle. A circle, out of yeah. Everything image. is fuzzy outside of that circle, but in yeah. that tight ring, you can see what's going on. And it, it feels very disorienting. It does. Looking through that. Yeah. Um, and on, so on the one hand, they're very much trying to direct your attention. Hmm. 
Uh, but also on the other hand, they're trying to, yeah, you see it there. Um, the disturbed mind of somebody focus, <laughs> hyper focusing on. <laughs> yeah. And that's um, further emphasized by the fact that this doesn't have a standard framing for the anime series in the sense that it's not always focused on characters' faces. Hmm. Uh, in these early shots, you're seeing girls' legs, you're seeing girls in the back of the head. Uh, it's very disorienting because you can't just kind of narrow it on Who's a character. Point of view. Where yeah. are we? Who are these people? From? What are we? <laughs> what are we looking at? <laughs> yeah, it's very strange, and we do finally start to zero in on one character with that fantastic opening line. I got to say, this is one of my favorite opening lines of any anime ever. That was from back when I didn't like myself. Hmm. Wow. Boy, does that get intriguing. That, <laughs> that, uh, that makes you go, well, hmm, okay, okay, I'll bite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so here she is washing her hands. Um, and we see she's a pretty normal-looking Japanese schoolgirl. Yeah. Long hair in braids, in this case. Dressed in the school uniform. Dressed in the school uniform. And uh, Sophomore, class two. Moto. So, so Moto is, is the main character here. We should also mention... Mm -hmm as we've seen later, that this is a series with a lot of characters and it is beneficial to really grok and, and to pay attention to characters' names because they're not necessarily going to show up again. So then we have uh, these various shots of the school grounds and we see this moment with her and boys. And again, here's kind of your hint that something weird is going on. Hmm. Um, or, uh, about her personality. She stops in the middle of the hallway, two guys are coming at her, and she moves to one side, and they walk past. Like she's invisible. Yeah. She's, she's, she's making herself small and yeah. out of the mm -hmm. attention of these people. She's not saying, hey, I'm a uh, human. I <laughs> deserve to have the space that I'm occupying. She's yeah. like, oh, fade into the... Very much so. And so her... Very her, passive. Yeah. So her friend shows up here, and it takes, on out. takes us a while for us to, to see that her, that her friend can be um, recognized by the fact that the friend has this uh, lighter hair, mm. and it's abnormally short. light. It's almost yeah. blonde, um, and it's cut short, which tells us something mm. about her character. It tells us that she's a little more modern. She's a With little, it, with the hip, with the trend. Exactly. Um, and she's a little bit more, um, yeah, just hip, if you will. As the, the young people say these days, the trend thing. <laughs> as, as those youngsters. Yeah, pretty much. And so she's trying to get um, come on Moto out. to come to come out. Let's now, go, be social. Right now, of course, you know serial experiments. Lane had come out two years earlier, and this was the primary motivating storyline of Lane. Hmm. So this may well have been them trying to sort of hint to viewers that their show was going to be a Lane-like TV show. And I think I think. Uh, were some of the some of the folks involved in this also involved on Lane? I'm not familiar with I, that, to I, be honest. I, I it could well be. Been, uh, um, I, I'm pretty sure none of the major staff were uh, in terms of like director and and um, and such. But uh, um, it certainly has a, a a lot of sort of call outs to Lane visually and in terms of initial storyline. Again, just to kind of tell people we're doing something kind of like what Lane did. It should be pointed out Lane was not a huge commercial success. But it was a big artistic success. Fantastic. Uh, no. I, I, without, yeah, without a <laughs> doubt. <laughs> and so people within the anime industry and also otaku knew Lane and respected Lane. Um, one of those things. Um, Marvin. Yes. Hey, hey Marvin. Um, yeah, Bo yeah, Boogie Pop is a good example. So uh, Marvin in our chat room is pointing out that if you... Uh, find uh, if you find this online, you're going to need to find a high quality version because it is so dark. Intentionally, you know, it's literally dark visually. I found myself wanting to adjust my monitor yeah. just so I could see deeper into mm -hmm. the dark yeah. scenes because the, the black <laughs> levels were so squashed, mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't really make out detail in them. Now, to be fair, part of that is budgetary. Hmm. Part of that is they did not have a big budget for this show. This was just when anime budgets were tanking in Japan. Oh, there, there was a, a, a downturn. Oh, yes, very much so. So budgets were very, very low. So by doing this, they didn't have to draw as much. Hmm. And so they deliberately... Um, save on backgrounds. Yeah, save on backgrounds. You save on animation because you're not drawing lots of detail to the characters. Um, you still have to do a lot of stuff with, with shadows, 
but that can be done with uh, less expensive compositing. Exactly, um, and, and less expensive um, shading. So, so yes, that th th that was something of a cost savings as well. But yes, definitely look for a a high res version, but also recognize it is going to look dark, um, and and washed out and faded. So yeah, so um, we know her friend is hip and not really succeeding in drawing her friend out. Yeah, very she's well. trying. Tr she's trying to get Moto to be mm -hmm. social. Hey, come on, let's go. Yeah, and meet and, some boys. <laughs> right, and, and and so and, and that's an important thing, and something that again it's hard to know unless you know Japanese culture. One of the things somebody mentions is, well, there are three of them, hmm. and the fact that there are three girls here hints that it, this is a group date. Hmm. So it's three boys, three girls going out, and and in classic Japanese '90s or 2000s style. What do they do? They go out for karaoke. Karaoke, which is fun. It is. Yeah. Um, and again, we get a hint here about Moto's character. Oh. The fact that the other two girls had their jackets off. Take off your jacket, stay a while. Yeah. Relax. Uh, but she doesn't relax. She doesn't. No. Relax. She's got her jacket on. She's she got her jacket on. She's like totally reserved. Absolutely. She's not a opening herself to the group at all in any emotional or social. No. And and, and even further. Um, both the other girls are right next to their respective partner, whereas she's she has opposite nobody. Yeah. <laughs> her, her partner. Yeah, she's like, and, and she's even like across from. Yeah, she's even like scooched over a little bit from the closest person. Yeah, so she's kind of very much keeping herself away. And again, here's a good example of where this is a show that rewards close watching. The social isolation mirrored in the in the behavior there. Yeah, they're telling you a lot about these characters just through these, these little visual cues, and that'll become more important later. And so this guy opposite her. He seems nice. He normal seems guy. handsome. Normal, nice normal guy. guy. Yeah. Um, nothing too creepy going on here. Yeah. But she's just not comfortable. No. Um, and so here's a great a great point where you start wondering, well, who's wrong? Like, are they pushing her too far by trying to put her out in a social situation where she's uncomfortable? Mm, but they're trying to be friends and exactly. get her out so she can enjoy herself. But she doesn't seem to want to unwind. <laughs> no, certainly not. Um, and so there's this, this little moment where somebody asks about this guy named Sautome. Saotome, the guy who disappeared? Yeah, so a little, little bit of plot here that this guy named Saotome, whom they all went to junior high with, has since Hey, what happened to you? You guys yeah. ever yeah. hang out with him? Now, of course, um, ba certainly back at, at this time, and to some extent now, you know, you get students who drop out, you get students who transfer in the middle of, of, of a semester without anyone really knowing what's going on. So there are these various mysteries, and of course, Sometimes people get killed, or sometimes people commit suicide. So there's, mm. there's that kind of stuff always kind of running around in the back of people's heads. If, if anything strange happens, what happened to this guy? Yeah. Um, you want to know, especially if you... Right. And so all of the girls say, I don't know who he is. Like, I remember him, but I have no idea who... The, you know, I, I guess he was a guy. Ah. But we know that's not true. Moto knows him. Moto knows him. She doesn't say she knows him. She doesn't. Whereupon we get this great little visual. And again, you got to kind of pay, pay close attention. Um, her friend turns Sasuko, in. Sasuko. Yes. I think, uh, I think, I think Sasuko. Um, so, so, she, many, <laughs> so many names. She turns to the guy and they appear to be kissing. Um, and then her head kind of tilts lower. And it doesn't tilt that low, pervs. Um, but, it, it, you know. <laughs> It does tilt to indicate that they are, you know, it, it, it's not a kiss on the cheek. You know, <laughs> they're, they're clearly, yeah, they're, they're, they're sucking, sucking tongues Thanks. there. Um, there's some making out going on. There's making out going on. <laughs> it should also be um, pointed out, you know, karaoke rooms are soundproofed. And isolated. The door closes, yep. you don't see in. <laughs> yeah, so no one knows what goes nice on in there. private, among friends uh, behavior. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can get away with a lot of stuff. Uh, in fact, a lot of karaoke bars started... Um, Putting in changing things around after a while. Uh, when we'll have found, a surveillance camera yeah. just so we don't get sued. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, this became a kind of an open secret amongst people. And so again, a very she's uncomfortable. Washing she's washing her hands, hands again. Up. My goodness. Hmm. She seems very. I think there's a. She seems very cleanly. <laughs> but why do are we focusing on her washing her hands? Yeah, kind of a hint. And so Modo comes into the bathroom, and this is the bathroom in the karaoke place. And I, I should point out. You know, only in Japan. My gosh, even the bathroom in the karaoke place is spacious and spick and span clean. Um, and we get this very interesting expression on Moto. I'm, I'm sorry, on the friend. Uh, Sasuko. Sasuko. It's very almost drugged out, relaxed. Yeah. Like, hey, you don't have a problem with this, right? 
we're cool. There's no issue. What? Right. Mm. Why would we have any problem with that? You're still my friend, aren't you? <laughs> Why wouldn't she be? Hmm. Yeah. So here we find out that the friend actually backstory dated Saotome. Yeah. Uh, but she didn't say anything either. No. Saotome comes up in that setting. Well, you know, she's with a guy. She probably doesn't want to yeah. sour the, uh, <laughs> the mood yeah. by bringing up previous... Uh, she even says that he's he, he's awful jealous. Oh, that's so, even worse. Yeah. So letting sleeping dogs lie mm -hmm. there. She's uh, so yeah. I take it uh, we learn a little bit of backstory about uh, Moto and uh, yeah. Sasako. <laughs> and... Yeah. So now we start discovering what what's going on, and this is where I, I really fell in love with this series. To be honest, when we now meet Sao Tome and the friend in junior high. Oh yeah. And we find the friend. Looks much more like Moto now. Yeah, she's nice, shy. She's humble, reserved. Shy girl. Very much so. You know, very sweet. Yeah. Pure. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Moto is a little more outgoing, and you find out that sh that the two of them have shifted over time. One's become more like the other, and vice and versa. Personality has become more extroverted and yeah. uh, social, <laughs> and, and 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 also um, uh, short hair. Um, and short hair. Yeah, it was come And on. now, 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 when did this change occur? Right around when Sao Tome showed up. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So again, there, there's and now again we, we get some some interesting moments where okay, and and to that point, um, this is immediately followed by this cacophonous cuckoo of a clock. Hmm. So Wah! it's very jangly jarred me out of my seat. yeah very disorienting <laughs> um and we, we noticed two things about this one is about time hmm. it's about the passage of time things are changing we also see that the clock is set to two o'clock two two so it's about two people and how they're hmm. changing um a lot of symbolism and imagery going on so, so now we see that these characters are starting to change and that, that they're flipping around and now we get this little surprising moment where the friend whispers that she lost her virginity. Yes. Um, and she's becoming even more free-spirited. And she's not just staying with... Uh, <laughs> Sautome. No. no. At that point, she's kind of mm -hmm. sleeping around on him. Exactly. Playing the field. So eventually she breaks up with him, too. Um, and what's interesting, too, here is, again, because into that psychology, um, this isn't simply about um, Moto and the friend acting differently. The friend is leaving Moto behind. Hmm. The friend is kind of moving She's on. She's moving forward in her yeah. life. Yeah. She... Going through the maturing process of developing mm -hmm. sexually and socially. <laughs> yeah. And you get this feeling that Moto feels, that Moto, I mean, junior high, Moto probably hasn't ever had, a, had a boyfriend yet, and or arguably. And then as soon as her friend has a, has a boyfriend, suddenly moto starts to pull back she draws back she sees wait wait something's mm -hmm. no she, she sees what her friend does and yeah does 180. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so in, in a lot of ways this is all about um jealousy mm. to an extent uh and, and moto's feelings of jealousy now you point out this very imp uh, helpful thing now, now now moto seems to have feeling for this satome mm. but her friend was involved with him yeah so she seems to have taken uh, her feelings and kind of squashed them yeah. so that it didn't interfere. Mm -hmm. But she observed that her friend was running around <laughs> on the guy. So then we come to this mm -hmm. scene where Satome and Moto meet together mm -hmm. by the rabbit cage. Yeah. And rabbits are, are, are kind of significant. Mm -hmm. um, rabbits have been used for determining pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, through many cultures. Uh, if you take uh, a woman's urine and you inject it into a rabbit if she's pregnant i believe it kills the rabbit so mm. so when you hear the song sweet emotion by aerosmith ah. can't catch me because the rabbit done died ah. uh where he's talking about uh, uh uh the 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 chief of police's daughter um mm -hmm. you know uh, the rabbit done died meant that he got her pregnant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. this, it's not explicitly said here. No. But there's some deeper implications mm -hmm. that there's a dead rabbit there. Yeah. 
Uh, and the excuses uh, sound pretty flaky. A cat got it. So how'd the cat get it out of the cage? Yeah. And uh, what's it doing there? Right. Um, it, it's a little creepy. And also the fact, and, and we also get this hint, that Sao Tome is completely nonplussed. Hmm. No emotional reaction. Just, oh, dead rabbit. Really? That's, That's kind of something to be <laughs> concerned with. I mean, even yeah. a normal person kind of goes, whoa. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, granted, you know, this isn't a an elementary uh, school comedy where, uh, you know, oh my gosh, the the, the, the poor little bunny, but it, yeah, he is surprisingly, you know, cut off about this. Very clinical. Yes, and so we have this important uh, bit of dialogue between the two, mm. where um, he makes the point that well, the rabbit was going to die anyway, so how tragic is it really? I mean, they're just, you know, they have such short lifespans. Um, eh. Mm, I wonder, foreshadowing? Maybe. Maybe. Um, and, of course, we already know that he disappeared at some point. Yeah. So we know something strange is going on here anyway. Now, it, it, it said that he, he, he went to another school. Mm-hmm. But so, then from there, he disappears. Correct. Well, presumably. So, presumably. Yeah, so, so this is, so there, we, we, we established, I think, their second year in high school. Um, so presumably they haven't seen each other for a year, year and a half by now. <laughs> um, so we jump back to the present where <laughs> she's having a bad day. Um, so she kind of leaves behind her group. Um, and so Moto sees this apparition. Whoa, it's materializing. Yes. And so this, this kind of ghost of Sao Tome appears in front of her. That's creepy freaky. Now, of course, part of the part of the question is: Is she just hallucinating this? I mean, it, it would not be rub my eyes, double take. Yeah, it would not Did be I just see you know <laughs> completely unreasonable to, to think that she's stressed out. She's yeah. been thinking about this a lot, and he shows up. She also pointed out that he approaches her without walking. He just sort of slides right up to her, mm. very ghost-like. Gliding. Yes. Yeah. She freaks out and runs off. I definitely freak. Understandable. <laughs> yeah. And now we get the, the the you know a lot more about her personality. She's in bed. She's in bed. She Somebody's wakes up. Somebody's waking her up, though. Yeah, sounds they like a father room, probably. Like, don't come in the room. Yeah, well, and, and he didn't even come into the room. He, he just, just opened the door. The door. Yeah. And she yeah. said, don't open, don't the, door open the door. Whoa. Okay. Wow. Um. So she gets up. She wonders if she dreamt it. Um. But now immediately here oh, come the wipes. The, the baby wipes. She's wiping the handle of the door on the outside. Yeah. She's creeped out by the person mm -hmm. who. Mm, Touch the doorknob. Yep, and now she's wiping she's, the back of her hand. But not just wiping it; she's wiping it raw. Yeah, I think she might have some obsessive compulsive disorder. Mm. So she's continually mm. washing her hand and rubbing and cleaning. Yeah, there might be not a little bit of good at all. pathology there. Yeah, you know, psychological pathology. So now we start getting some references to other characters in the franchise. Oh, who's this girl? Yeah, so we walk along and we see a. A girl wearing a pair, what appears to be only a shirt um, out there, and she's sort of stretching a hand out uh, without saying anything to emptiness, which is, again, kind of a hint that she, uh, what she's doing. Is she all there? Doesn't appear to be. <laughs> but, again, if, if you knew the series, you'd see, like, oh, her, that's awesome. So now we get this, this, this moment, and, again, here's where the show gets, gets kind of uh, significant. Um, in terms of, of its production values. We mentioned while we were watching it that the volume levels are very different. Yeah, that, I, I noticed that the sound yeah. is uh, natural sounds mm. and uh, music are, are, mm -hmm. are, are mixed a lot louder than dialogue. Yeah. You have to listen really close for mm. the dialogue, and then when the sound <laughs> effects come up, it blows you away. Whoa! Yeah. The and intensity. That, and that's very intentional. Um, that was part of the original mix. Um, another thing that's interesting here is that there is no audio processing on internal monologue thoughts. Hmm. So normally you get that you bit know, of an echo. Right. Yeah. Um, and here's where that gets significant because Moto and her friend are talking back and forth. And the friend says something, I don't have the exact line, but it's something along the lines of basically, um, maybe I kind of screwed up. Hmm. Um, or you know maybe there's some, something more going on there, and you see from the back of their heads, and you hear Moto say, "Yeah, you did," hmm. and you don't know if she said that out loud. Is it a thought? Is it a vocalized thought? Yeah, <laughs> and then there's silence. Nothing happens 
maybe the silence was <laughs> yeah and then the friend um runs off hmm. and so you don't know yeah so there, there's that moment there and unfortunately it's one of those things where this this uh there we go so yeah, so you hear the line they're kind of standing there and then you don't know what the reaction is and the friend just well, runs off hmm. i don't know but that's that's there to make you wonder what's you know hmm, what's going on and again oh, here we she see goes with more tissues yeah <laughs> opening the yeah, school door she's, now she's literally germophobic using tissues to open and close doors wow that's pretty bad so she comes in and she gets <laughs> i love this now she's at the nurse's office she's at the nurse's office but there's no nurse right now no not at there's the moment this guy there's this creepy guy who immediately comes up to her he's he's larger than her and puts out a hand and says there's a spider on your heart sorry it's just that there is a spider attached to your heart how <laughs> creepy is that what, what are you talking about <laughs> yeah I don't don't mind i'll go <laughs> if i grope you I <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so uh, uh, they even break some vials here which spins across now take a note of that vial for later hmm. um but Knocked over the medicine cabinet. Yeah, There's something he did. going on there. Something's going on there, and he explains that he has this. He's been able to do this thing recently, where he can see this spider on people's hearts, hmm. and he can eat it for you, and it will cause you to not feel pain anymore. Wow. Um, and he says, you know, <laughs> he basically says, I'm "Not trying to be creepy. I just have this ability. Don't worry about it." And he he gives <laughs> the best or worst pickup line ever. So if you ever want me to want me to grope you, find me. <laughs> find me, yeah. <laughs> and walks off. And she doesn't she doesn't address that part. <laughs> she addresses that. Well, yeah, I do have a yeah. sort of bottled up, uh, repressed uh, feelings and emotions and something she's been bottling up inside. So she she kind of goes to where he was addressing. Yeah. Rather than the sexual innuendo. She she goes to the heart of the matter there, so to speak. No yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this tells us a few things. It tells us that A, um, he did see to the heart of the matter. <laughs> um uh B, she recognized that. Hmm. C, this is our 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 second or third hint, and now we're really starting to realize that weird supernatural stuff happens and people don't react to that the way people react to that in our world. Oh, so something supernatural happened. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, like it's still no. <laughs> stop. Yeah. <laughs> it still kind of freaks people out, but it, it still seems, you know, it, it doesn't freak people out the same way it does to us. I wonder. Yeah. Maybe we have something in our world that we just sort of <laughs> casually, yeah, whatever. Uh, the magic of the computer. There we are. Who knows? So Toka, um, I'm sorry, um, uh, uh, oh, Toma. Uh, to uh, uh, to Moto? Toma. Moto, thank you. Uh, decides she's going to figure out what's what's going on, and so she goes to the high school where um, uh, Satome. Uh, thank you. Where S Satome transferred, and so we cut to this almost kind of hero shot. Oh, all these girls of Toka, which who was I was thinking of. Toka's the one with the bag. Uh, the one with the bag, oh. and because uh, she's with her friends. Mm -hmm. and, and and so this is one of those things where those who know Boogie Pop knows that a girl carrying a duffel bag is a signal, hmm. and this girl Toka is suddenly very helpful and comes up and says, I see you're here. I see you're wearing a different school uniform. That's a hint, you know, just kind of um, generally, okay, obviously you're from a different school. Why are you standing out here as everyone's leaving? And she says, I want to see Sao Tome. Um, and they're like, you yeah, know, she, he's disappeared. Oh no, she, she says, I want to see um, uh, this woman, Nagi Kirima, uh, because somebody had mentioned that Nagi Kirima was looking for Sao Tome. Hmm. And, <laughs> Toka reacts with this mild horror and says, I'm so sorry. Don't worry. I'll go with you. It'll be okay. That's a complete mystery to me. Yeah. What? <laughs> why, why, why should she be this? And so, and so the hint is that Nagi Kirima is a little difficult to, to deal with. Yeah. It's, you know, you need a little bit of uh, backup if you're dealing with Nagi Kirima. Hmm. But she's gone for the day. So that's not going to help either. Whereupon Toka says, okay, so what are we going to do? Which is this very interesting reaction. You know, it's this, okay, well, that's taken care of. You know, what's next? Very pragmatic reaction to the situation. Yeah. Uh, which is quite nice. And so Moto says, no, don't, don't worry. You know, I'm all right. You go on with your friends. <laughs> hmm. 
And Moto, to her credit, decides, I got to resolve this. Hmm. Something's going on. And so uh, presumably in, in Moto's mind here is this idea that, all right, I've had these repressed feelings for Sao Tome. Hmm. I'm going around. I'm depressed. I'm frustrated. To the point where I was out with my friends and I thought I saw him in an alley. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 and 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 not only that, she's she's got the back issue of yeah. she she liked him, yeah. her friend liked him, mm -hmm. her friend cheated on him, that denied, uh, that denied her the chance of developing a relationship mm -hmm. with the guy. The girl who had the relationship threw it away. Yeah, and she lost her opportunity. So yes. where is this guy? I she's <laughs> she's got to she's got to find him and yeah. What's and she going to do? It's that wonderful sort of central tragedy, which I, I love about the writing of the series, is that um, this all hinges on the fact that because um, she isn't moving forward, you know, her friend has been able to move forward in all these different ways. Mm. She hasn't even been able to confess to a guy once. It's it, it's it stymied her development. Yeah. It stopped it in its place. And yeah. And so now she feels, okay, I'm going to go back to where I saw him and I'm going to try to kind of exercise this. And a uh, good question, Liquidus, about why anime were uh, so low during, the budgets were so low. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I laugh about the uh, <laughs> rice cakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Boogie Steve. Pop fan. <laughs> Boogie Pop, the glaucoma of animes. <laughs> that's funny. Steve, that's, it, it, that yeah, is that's a awesome. a pretty good description. That is very awesome. <laughs> so, she, so she runs to there. And again, we're, get, we're getting a few hints. And so earlier, as she's walking along, I don't know if we saw this. Um, you know, maybe not at this point. Um, so Sao Tome appears in front of her. It kind of coalesces out of bits of light in this uh, rather neat little image. Ah, uh, to materialize. I know. Isn't that convenient? Ah, uh, I wish I could do that. And, ah, yes. So, again, here, here's our kind of hint. There's Toka from earlier with her bag, uh, with her duffel bag, and she's walking along, and she even bumps into a guy, an, an older person, and doesn't apologize. I'm on a mission. Yeah, there's something you I'm don't. I'm not going to even acknowledge that I bumped you. you I'm going to just keep going. Do that in Japan when you're a youth and you bumped into an older person. Yeah, um, there's some politeness and some formality there, right? <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so there's something serious is going on. So um, Toka confesses. Oh, to the materialized body of yes, of Satome, of Satome, or oh. or the, his ghost. Yeah, <laughs> something. Well, how does his body materialize? So. <laughs> Um, but she She's does trying this, to. And she does this while a train is going past, so you can't hear her words. Yeah. Which is very interesting. Now, I should point out, if you listen closely, you can hear she says words. Yes. So they dubbed it. There are lines there, but they deliberately made it, again, in, in both versions, so that you can't make out those words. It's like the, like the, 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 the whistles on, on the waterfront. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't hear it. <laughs> and you get this devastating line where... He then responds with this this line, which they actually used a lot in the, the commercials. He says, who are you? And he says it in a weird voice. Yeah. It's a weird sort of echoey voice. And she, she doesn't. Uh, and she realizes he doesn't recognize no, her. No, this isn't Sao Tome. Something's wrong. This is some creature. And she realizes she's made a, she's made a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Yeah. Th th this is very bad. This is some weird thing. Uh, and again, there have been these these stories of we, we hear early in the episode someone got taken by Boogie Pop. Yeah, and 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 there's mention of his ghost. Yeah, being being seen. Yeah. So that already implies that he might have been dead yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> disembodied, yeah, scary uh -huh. of some sort. This is not good. Another train goes by as he goes around to the back of her and says, "I'm going to consume you now." <laughs> and she says, "All right, fine." Shit, that's that's pretty much she's given up there. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, uh, she, she, she she's was done. not happy with herself before, but this and doesn't in, seem to be. In fairness, I mean, a she's a teenager. Oh, okay, um, you're gonna kill me now. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so granted, you know, hormones. Um, but also, I mean, she tried to do the one thing she's always been trying to do, and it wasn't even to the right person. It failed miserably in every way. In every way, and now the guy wants to eat her. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wants I mean, to consume her. I'd be in pretty deep despair at that point. Or the creature, or whatever yeah. it is. Whereupon this happens, which we've all seen that hentai. That's great. But, um, but fortunately, he is stopped by this thing. Boom! His, yeah. his head just exploded. His head exploded with this line, and I love the animation as he kind of writhes on this line, and his uh, just his limbs go everywhere in this very alien way. A line with a weight has gone through his head, and yeah. he's vaporized. 
as he as he <laughs> undulates on the line. And yeah, and the line comes back with this sort of strange spirituality, and we see this character well, with yeah, this weird outfit, very weird outfit, funny looking hat, who explains very simply and very clearly that's not Sao Tome, that was his ghost. Hmm. And don't feel bad because you know that wasn't the person that you were you actually cared about. Sao Tome is dead. How does this how does this person know so much about the situation? Well, because she turns around and says, I know that because I killed him. <gasps> and walks off. The mystery okay. just continues. <laughs> <laughs> it is, this, this is truly turning into what uh, I've heard people describe as uh, a sepia mystery. Yes, very much so. <laughs> very dark. Yeah. Uh, both both in its <laughs> visual yeah. and and in its concept. Mm -hmm. Her love her her love has been already killed. Yeah. <laughs> and it's replacing her the, 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 the phantasmic replacement mm. just almost tried to eat her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Uh, very dark. Yes. Whereupon yet another train goes by. A lot of trains. Trains all of a sudden. So trains being symbols of movement, mm. of of travel from place to place. Mm, the time. Um, so again, kind of hinting that things are starting to move on now. She's washing her hands again. Ain't gonna get away with it from that. A, a normal day of self-loathing. Exactly. She washes her hands. Um, but her friend comes up, says, "Hey, um, you want to go out? I'll be waiting for you at the front gate." And there's this moment where the lights flicker, hmm. which is kind of interesting, which reflects back on the beginning of the episode. There was that giant light. Yeah, the big column of light when all the power went out and yeah. came back on. Something weird with the electricity there. Very much so. But there's and it looks like a normal day. It's not like I yeah. see lightning no, or no. storms or anything. There's would... a little power surge. And it ends with this very interesting line. Because um, she said, um, I'm back to normal, um, and I'm, I'm alive somehow. And the final line is, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, great, that's a great line. Because what is going on here? You know? Yeah. What is this whole Th This is This scenario? is definitely one of these animes that feels like a trip to the Twilight Zone, yeah. the Outer Limits, and uh, like Tales from the Crypt all <laughs> wrapped yeah. up into one. <laughs> um, I also just want to say, this is why, what I love about Right Stuff. This is the Right Stuff release. Uh, right Stuff, famously, uh, they are a bunch of anime fans. They sell anime, and they have occasionally at times said, no, this needs to be licensed. We're going to license this and release it in the US. We're just going to do it now. Um, and so this is one of the, the few where they, where they did that. And during the credits, they say, um, uh, th th there's a, a moment where they say, comments, questions, we love hearing from our customers, even if you just rented this tape or DVD. Don't forget, $4 gets you one of our famous anime catalogs in the US. Email us at info at rightstuff.com, or send a surface mail at, or visit us online at. It is, I just think feedback, it's, feedback. It's so awesome that they kind of connect with their fans as, as closely as possible. That is cool. You know, it's, it's funny you mention that because I slowed it down to read it when I saw it. I said, <laughs> Wait a second, they just spoke to uh, the people watching it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, I've so, gotten their catalog in the past. Oh, it's great catalog. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so Boogie Pop Phantom is one of those shows that is very deliberately mysterious. You need to come into it expecting strangeness. Now, so many characters, it's, uh, yeah. it's a um, bit tricky because they don't always say, say their names very frequently mm -hmm. like some other characters. But and, and that's another good point, is that this is a very episodic series. There's a, a larger overall plot line, but they're gonna, you're not going to see her again. Uh, you're going to see Moto again. Um, so you're going to see these various stories sort of woven out, and you'll see other characters over and over again. Just be aware of that as you go in. Um, so Liquidus asked about um, budgets during Boogie Pop's time. So this thing happened called the collapse of the Japanese bubble economy. Hmm. Um, the Japanese economy was going up really, really, really fast and high in the 80s. Uh, did really, really well. And then um, uh, around uh, the very end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, the bottom fell out. And uh, in fact, I will very quickly pull up while we prepare for Horizons and um, talk to you about that and, and show you a little image, um, if I can find it here. Um, I may not have it. 
Yes, I do. Is that uh, Talthane? Talthane says uh, mm -hmm. the commentary track on this is great. Yes. So I got to listen to that. And Thank you for reminding me about the Talthane. So the anime crew, i.e. the director and some of the staff, actually recorded commentary for every single episode of the show. That's a lot of work. Usually I, it's a, maybe one or two episodes. Yeah. Like, the, every single episode. And part of the reason is because this is so complicated <laughs> because there's so much backstory. So they explain a lot of that and they explain a lot of the imagery. Um, so here's a quick, if you can see that on the screen, um, here's the Japanese real estate market and stock market from 1980 to 2005. And you see right there around 1990 to 91, it got really high and then it got a little bit lower. hard to see on the, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, hard to see. So point being that the, the, the market big rose, peak, yeah, big drop, right. Ooh, um, the bubble. Yeah, so the bubble burst. Now, as we all know, it takes a little while for that to be felt in the regular economy. Hmm. Also, anime had the advantage in 1988 of this little thing called Akira. Um, uh, that, that sounds like a film I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> you may, some of you may have seen Akira. Um, Akira was hugely successful and pumped a lot of money into the anime industry. So there was the, the industry was flush with money for uh, several years after that. So it wasn't until the late 90s and very early 2000s when that caught up to the anime industry and suddenly there just wasn't much money. This also corresponded with the rise of um, um, broad availability of fan subs to the American market hmm. and the bottom kind of fell out of the American market as well. Oh wow, it's, it's like a perfect storm of uh, yeah. uh, disaster for anybody who's in the industry mm -hmm. at that point. And the, the American market had been spinning up to kind of take over some of that um, uh, money influx. They were they were they were sending some money over over to, to Japan, and so that dried up just as the Japanese money dried up, yeah. and there just there, there was no money coming in anywhere. Ooh. It was it was tough. Um, plus, the video game market was starting to really spin up, and so a lot of folks were jumping ship to video games. Uh, move over to greener pastures. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So it was it was a dark time in terms of anime budgets. And if you've seen anime from the um, early 2000s. Hmm. There's a clear difference between the anime of that period, anime of the 90s, and anime of today. Just the, the budgets are, are just clearly much lower back then, and so you did what you could. 